podcasting. We're going to go ahead and get started, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, good evening, Russell from Scotland. Uh, my name is Jeff Gibby. Today gonna, we're going to have a fairly relaxed class. Uh, the goal for really this today uh, for me is to show you how to use uh, the candle profit system that's developed by Steve Bigelow in a, a kind of a very step-by-step -step routine. Um, I don't think it's going to take very long to accomplish that. Uh, the nice thing about, uh, you know, kind of the later versions of Metastock is once you have everything installed, it's a fairly straightforward process and all that kind of good stuff. So my name is uh, Jeff Gibby. I'll be doing today's class. I am in charge of business development for Metastock. And uh, like all the products that we develop, Steve is one that we spent a lot of time on. Uh, Steve spent a lot of time on it with our programmers. It's something that we're really, really proud of. The reason we're doing kind of an informal class today is we've had a lot of people that have actually kind of said, well, you know, this is really good. And we've had a lot, a huge influx of new Metastock customers that may not know exactly what an exploration is or how to run an exploration or how to kind of get around in the Metastock environment. And so really today, I just want to spend as much time as we need, answer as many questions as you guys might might have, but take you through a step-by-step -step kind of scenario with that. So before we get started, um, I need to kind of recite from heart a legal disclaimer. Today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the accompanying software plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. Uh, Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of their software, trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. I don't have that written and posted on the wall, believe me, it's just memorized by heart. I'm also not, um, just a couple of other things that I always add. Today we're not really going to be talking about trades, I'm not really going to be recommending trades. And I'm not really kind of a financial advisor either, which means if I was to kind of accidentally imply at some point today that you should be buying Apple, it was a mistake and it was for educational purposes as well. I just want to make sure everybody understands that, you know, today's goal of today's class is to kind of help you figure out how to scan, how to do the CPS, how it interfaces with Metastock, and it's certainly not a goal to tell you Apple's going to go up, down, or sideways, and I guarantee it'll do one of those three things. So anyway, <clears throat> let's go ahead and get started. Okay. Um, a big part of my role, just to kind of talk a little bit about me uh, for no more than a minute, I'm in charge of business development, which means, uh, you know, I was actually the one that reached out to Steve Bigelow and said, you know, I really like what you're doing. We should kind of get something developed for Metastock. And uh, you guys, uh, if you're if you're new to Metastock or if you, even if you're not new to Metastock, um, we, you know, we've been kind of partners with Steve for probably a few years now, and he's a very, very good partner of ours, and very, very famous, very popular. He's actually been trading, uh, training people in the market how to trade for, I think he said 19 years, and he's been involved in the markets for about 30 something years. So a very, very big uh, kind of guru, uh, very fun to listen to him speak, and a, an awesome educator as well. Um, um, we did spend a lot of time on Metastock actually getting all of his patterns pulled into Metastock. And, uh, you know, the CPS is uh, the result of a lot of work. Uh, the thing that we're proud of it, uh, you know, you can probably tell, I'm just, I love it. It's a great product. And um, particularly with kind of Steve's patterns, it, it re represented kind of a bit of a, let's say, a challenge in developing it because a lot of the patterns that he uses are very, very visual patterns. And so it's a lot different than saying, well, is this moving average higher than this moving average? And this is happening and this is happening. We had to kind of figure out a machine language way to actually kind of count out the, uh, the different patterns. So I'm happy with it. All in all, we identify 20 of his patterns that he teaches day in and day out. And really kind of the point of this class isn't really to sell you on the product. I know most of you have it already, but it's really to kind of make sure that you understand what it is that you got and that you understand how to use it. So here I've got a, a list of all the um, patterns that are identified in the chart. Uh, and really kind of what I'm going to do is I'm going to really kind of basically swap into Metastock right now. We're going to kind of open up the Explorer. I'm going to show you exactly how to get it, how to go through, how to 
how to have Metastock scan for these patterns with CPS um, and how to kind of analyze the charts. If you have questions, let me know. Really here, really here, this class is something that I put together for you. Uh, and really isn't, I don't have a huge agenda to sell you the CPS today. Most of the people that were invited already own the CPS. This was really kind of a class that was put together, like I said, to give you some knowledge about how to use it. Um, we've attracted a lot of Steve's hardcore customer bases to use this product and we want to make sure that this is really kind of as much of a meta stock training session as it is a meta as a as a um, as a cps so let's get started okay um we're going to change screens here the powerpoint's going to go away where's my mouse oh here it is uh, John, I, I, or Josh Shippy, I show you raised your hand. I'm going to actually tell you, if you have a question, go ahead and type it in chat. Um, that would be the best way. If you raise your hand and I, let, and I click allow, it actually turns on your microphone. I'm not sure that's what you had in mind. So if you have a question, go ahead and type it in. Okay? All right. Let's go ahead and get into Metastock. Give me a second. Let me swap over here. Okay. You should see Metastock. Um, I've got a chart open. I wouldn't recommend you look at this chart. This is a, this is a chart that happens to be open because uh, of a dealer we're working with in Singapore had a question about it. So um, let's go ahead and kind of drive into kind of the bones of this. So I, I, the, the way I'm going to kind of show this is kind of the workflow that I would think would make the most sense. If you're a follower, Steve, you really want to be able to to go in and identify the stocks that have the patterns and kind of how they work and how they look and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to start in a tool that we call the Explorer. And now I can find the Explorer right here on my chart. It looks like a pair of binoculars. And when we say Explorer at Metastock, we mean a scanning tool. So this is a tool where we can go in and say, um, here's what I'm looking for. Look at all the S&P 100 or the NASDAQ 500 or the, uh, all the optionable stocks or any of, the, any of the universes that you want and tell me which ones kind of meet this criteria for me. Okay, so now I, uh, I just click on that. It opens up what we call our power console to the scan tab. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to find the one that's called CPS, okay, or Candle Profit System. It's I believe what we're looking for. We're just we're just going to find that on our list here. <laughs> and there's quite a few. Uh, and they're alphabetical, so right here, okay? Now, there's 20 different scans, so we broke them up into different patterns. So right here, it, once you install the CPS add-on into your Metastock, you'll have an exploration that's called CPS Doji Dynamite, J-Hooks, Power Signals, and Price Patterns, okay? And over here on the left, when you select them, it's actually going to tell you which ones it's scanning for. So if we were to select this particular screen and say that would go in and look for Doji at the top, Doji best friend left right left right bearish left right bearish um, the J hook would look for the J hook patterns or the fry pan bottoms of the J hook here's the power signals that looks for the uh, bearish kickers the flutter kickers the bullish flutter kick etc 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 and here's the price pattern so if we click on the price pattern it's going to find like our pry pan, our fry pan our bellish bolt hold our bearish bolt belt hold i'll try and speak in english uh, the cradle the slow curve and the t-line crunch now one thing that a lot of people don't know is you can actually select multiple ones of these so if i want to i can literally come in here and i can say well i want to run all four of them and i'm going to run uh, them again like the optional list and I want to just be able to kind of look at all the ones that kind of have any type of a pattern and to do that what I'm literally doing is I select the first one and then what I do is I, I hold the shift key I select the last one and that will highlight all of them for me so that's something that you can do for the sake of time um, I'm gonna just run the price pattern one so I'm gonna go ahead and select price pattern here I'll go ahead and click on next Okay, and then I'm going to have a list of the uh, stocks that are available for me to scan against. Okay, and the thing that's kind of nice about Metastock is we do have 192 exchanges that are available. Okay, so you'll notice I have Equities Asia. If I scroll down here, I can scroll uh, find 
find sectors. I can find North America, you know, equities, here's bulletin boards. I can find just about any list that I want. Now, the one thing that I'd like to show people, and since this is a training class, I'm going to show you how to, but you'll notice I have all these custom lists up at the top of my exploration. I want to show you how to set those up because ideally what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to select the scan that you want have the list that you want to scan it against right there at the very top just like I have and you want to be able to scan it uh, uh, have it as opposed to kind of like what we what you have to do initially is just kind of to come down here and find the list so what I'm going to show you how to do right now is actually set up a shortcut list so I'm going to click on this button that says manage custom list okay and this gives me a list of all of my well, it gives me the same list I was just looking at. Now, the way I kind of make a custom list that's all of the optional stocks or all the S&P 100 come to the top of the list is I just find the list that I want on this list one time. Here's optional stocks. I click on copy and yes. And then what that will do is that'll move all of the optional stocks up to the very top of my list. So that way, when I come in to run my, no, when I come in to run my scan there it is there's my actual list I don't have to go find it it's just there it's at the top of it for me so that's an easy trick uh, easy trick to use I'm not actually going to do a scan against the actual stock so what I'm gonna do just because it would take a little bit more time and um, it certainly wouldn't take very much time but I'm going to run a, a much smaller scan against a much smaller universe. Again, you can, if you understand how to use this, you can run scans as big as you want. And most of you, um, well, at least the ones of you that answered the poll question today, already have CPS. So the idea here is actually to show you how to use it. And most of you said you were kind of a brand new Metastock customer as well, which is exactly who I'm targeting for this particular class. So I'm going to select, I've selected the scan that I want, which is a CPS price pattern. Okay. I'm going to select the list that I want, which in this case is going to be the S&P 100 list. I go ahead and click on next. And then I basically have some options that I want to set. Okay. So load minimum, I would recommend that you leave these scans at load minimum records. Okay. For the exchange date and time, right now it's going to say be looking for stocks that are exhibiting this pattern today okay now some people like to go and maybe look at patterns that happened in the past and that's very very easy to do with Metastock. if I basically uncheck mark this and I wanted to maybe go in and say okay well I'm doing some simulation here I'm doing some research show me all these patterns that it happened on 927 and then I will go uh, trade them and see which ones work best to kind of figure out the best strategy to use you certainly can do that you just uncheck this use current date and time put in the date that you want and uh, that's literally all you have to do okay but I am going to show current <laughs> stocks today so I'm just going to basically recheck mark that where it says use current date and time okay if you guys have questions ask them I'm here to help you today um, for interval, uh, if you're using Metastock end of day, um, you'll have you'll be able to scan for daily patterns, weekly patterns, monthly, quarterly, yearly. If you have Metastock Pro and you want to, you can actually scan for like 30 minute or hourly patterns or one minute or five minute. So I'm going to leave it at daily, but that's where that option is to change that. Okay. I'm going to basically go ahead and just at that point, I, I do want to use the filter here. That'll filter all the stocks out that don't have a pattern. So at that point, all I have to do is I just click on start exploration and let this thing kind of run through it. Okay. Now this is a fully 30, this is a fully threaded operation. So right here where I have execution priority, if I want, and you'll notice it's kind of humming pretty fast. What I was going to say, but I didn't have time, is where it said execution priority, you could actually say, well, I want you to take less resources. If you want to run a big scan and be able to still run your word process or something like that, you can set it to like a medium priority or a low priority. The scanning is pretty pretty quick these days. I'm amazed how fast, it, how much faster it is than some of the older scanning things. They've put a lot of work into making sure that runs fast. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on reports. I'm going to show you how the report works. So this is 
again, actually this popped up on my other screen, so let me pull it over here for you. This is what your reports look like. Look like. Okay. Um, and I'll explain exactly what we're looking at. So this is basically out of the S&P 100, one stock actually exhibits a pattern right now, and that is Oracle Corporation. Okay. Now, in this particular scan, we were we were scanning for the fry pan, the bullish belt hold, the bearish belt, belt hold, the dumpling top, the cradle, the slow curve, the, and the T-crunch, okay, and the scoop. So how I know what pattern it is, is going to be basically what the column header says here. If it says zero under fry pan, it's not a fry pan. In this case, it's a SL curve, okay? And so that, that's basically how you'd kind of do it. Now, if I did have more than one instrument come up, there's a few things that I want to be able to do. I might want to be able to, let's say fry pan is your favorite pattern. If you if you sort by fry pan, it'll actually bring all the fry pan patterns to the top, and then you can open up those charts and look at them that way. If you have a lot of patterns that you want to look at, um, let's say we did, well, we did 100 stocks. Let's say we did 3,000. Um, you would probably have about maybe 30. Is my math right on that? Actual hits on 3,000 instead of 100. So if, if we wanted, we might be able to, we'd want to be able to kind of filter out based on the patterns that we're interested in and that kind of stuff. So does that make sense? Uh, Russell and Tybor, are you following along? Everybody else, any questions so far? Feel free to answer, ask. Uh, again, we can go as slow as we need to or as fast as we need to. And again, happy holidays tomorrow, everybody. This class is for you. <laughs> so uh, here on the rejects tab, it basically just tells us everything is a is a normal filter rejection. Okay. So basically, the only stock that was is showing up on this list is the Oracle because it's the only one that exhibits a pattern. Okay. Now I'm going to kind of divert from the normal flow of things a little bit. Like you can. Steven says how, a good question. How do you find any pattern within the last three days? Well, um, that's a really good question. You'd have to, actually, the way it's set up, this will find a, a pattern that has happened today, Stephen. There isn't actually a scan that would identify them within the last three days. You'd actually have to go and, and run a scan for yesterday and a scan for the day before. It is open code. Um, you could actually, if you know enough about the formula language, you could actually go in and create a scan that, that looks for that value to be true within the last three days. But what we are doing right now now it's just a scan for today okay let me go ahead and that's another thing people ask a lot with this particular scan and with this particular toolkit all of the actual meta stock formula that's writing everything is open so if you want to go in and look at it make modifications to it adjust it that kind of stuff you are able to do that some of our more hardcore users ask that question a lot and I would recommend that you make a copy of it if you do that Okay, so right now, since we only have Oracle, we could open the chart, but let's assume we had about 30 or 40 that actually show up here, and we wanted a way to kind of quickly go through that list to kind of maybe identify the ones that actually have the patterns that we want to trade. What you could do at this time is there's a button right here that says save list. Now, if I save that, it's going to come up here, and it's going to allow us to save it to a custom list. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a list. So I'm going to call this a CPS demo one stock. <laughs> okay, probably wouldn't create a, a stock list for just one stock, but I would for more than five or six because the workflow gets a lot better. I'm going to go ahead and click on create here. Okay, that'll add the name right here to demo one. Okay, I just click on OK. That'll actually add that to that oracle to my list okay now um, if I wanted to kind of go through those real quickly I just close my scanner okay I go to the CPS oh I'm gonna cough hold on a second I'm gonna turn off my microphone I have a cough coming I'm sorry about that I said I'm gonna go cough I uh, coughed and I must not have turned on my sound so that's my mistake um, let me start with opening the list. So I'm pretty sure I know where we kind of fell off. And that was, we just saved the list. And I wanted to show you how to look through the list. And no problem. We can go right back to there. It was only about four minutes. 
And um, every time I speak for about four minutes, you get three minutes of value. <laughs> so here we go. Uh, right here uh, on the Power Console, I just click on this P. That'll open up my Power Console. And he from here, I can actually run a new scan, or I can open up a chart. And we've already run this scan, so now what I want to do is I want to open up a chart. Okay, so I click on the charts button. Okay, here is that list that we saved the CPS demo one stock. Okay, now if it's a big list, in this case we only did a scan of a very small universe. Uh, if it's a very big list, all, all of them will be listed here. So if we click on this Fantana 100, it's going to list 100 stocks there. Okay, but in this case we just have one there. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up. We'll click on next. And here, with meta, with the later versions of MetaStock, it's actually really easy to apply all of Steve's rules uh, at the same time as well as his expert advisor. Right here where it says apply template, I'm just going to go ahead and click on uh, that, the down arrow here. And the one I'm, ta I'm looking for is called CPS Bigelow Chart View. Okay. Here, if you did a daily scan, you'll want to do a daily interval because that way that's where the pattern shows up. And then uh, all you do is you just click on open chart. It's that simple. I'm going to go ahead and close down the expert advisor commentary real quick. And you'll notice that when I applied that template, it's got Steve's T line. It's got his, um, his three period lines. It's got his moving averages that he likes to use. We also um, painstakingly actually um, copied all of his patterns and made sure that all the colors kind of jived up with the way he teaches things and that his templates for Metastock matched our templates for Metastock. It applies to stochastic. And of course it, it labels identifies all the patterns. So we did a scan for the slow curve. There's a slow curve on today. We know there's a slow curve today. That's what we scan for. You'll also notice we have the bear kicker right here before this downward movement. We have the bull kicker here. The thing that I've liked about Steve's stuff is sometimes it's not exact, but he definitely does a pretty good job of calling some moves. I mean, just look at this screen right here. Here was this fry pan bottom that formed. You had to kick the kick above the fry pan and kind of came up. Uh, and that would have been a really good signal. This bear kicker would have been really good. This left right bearish combo kind of came in a little bit too late. The bull kicker was awesome. This bear kicker was a little out of place. But his patterns generally tend to work very well. And that's one of the reasons I really like Steve. The other, another reason of the many reasons is because he can tell a really good story too. So now for those of you that may be new to Steve, um, I know we have a lot of people in here that actually came through Bigelow and they're new to Metastock. And this class is very much for you because I want you to understand how to run Metastock. It's, it's almost as much of a Metastock lesson as it is a CPS lesson. But um, for those of you that are new to Steve, of course we have commentary that comes along with this to kind of explain the patterns to you. Okay, and the way we get to that commentary is we right click on the chart, we go to expert advisor, and we go to commentary. And that's going to basically, you'll notice when I add that, you'll notice we have a big black arrow that forms right here. Okay, and then we uh, uh, coincidentally enough tell you exactly what a slow curve is. Okay, and in this particular case, we tell them that there sh when you should look to exit. Okay. We're saying this is a long trading opportunity. You exit on any price close back below the T line. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Tyber. We worked really hard on it. Tyber says this seems much better, light years ahead than John Murphy's plugin. Well, you know, we're getting smarter all the time. <laughs> so, but um, I always like to hear good things about these. You know, these are these are things we really, really care about. You know, we we spent so we we spent twelve months on this thing. So it's definitely not something that we kind of just kind of make up as we go along. We really care about them. So uh, those of you that aren't familiar with it, with Bigelow's things, we tried and kind of receive the specific criteria that kind of created these alerts. Remember, these are visual patterns. So we had to come up with some pretty specific math to get them. And so what we wanted to be able to do is if you had 30 patterns that you wanted to identify, we wanted to tell you what the specific criteria you'd be looking for are. And so that's why we kind of list those out. Again, because you know, you'll probably ideally, in a, you'll probably get 30 or 40 patterns a day. This way, you can kind of understand what they are and get a good feel for which ones you want to take out of those 30 or 40. Okay. 
Back here, this is a movable bar, so right now we're talking about the slow curve. However, if I came back here to this bull kicker that formed just a few days, it's actually going to tell you the same thing. The reason I came back to the bull kicker is I knew we had specific enhancements for that. And what an enhancement is, just so you understand the logic for it, the criteria are required for us to play the signal. The enhancements just make the signal better. So this specific criteria that we're saying right here is required for that to even show up in a scanner on your chart. The enhancements are not required, but if the kicker signal forms at a major support level, it's much more powerful. Or if the bigger the, bigger the dark candle at the bottom, the more powerful the reversal. So we told those kind of things to you. So you can look to see if, again, with the idea of you'll have like maybe 30 or 40 patterns that you might want to trade, we wanted to kind of allow you to, the information from Steve to understand which ones were best. To view the code, Kurt, um, <clears throat> to view the code, all you're going to do, everything's open. So if I want to come in here to the expert advisor and I go to the properties instead, um, and this is one thing that I like, uh, Steve's like, well, yeah, let them have it. Let them see it, um, you know. The, I already explained what all the patterns are. So if you come in here to the different highlights, you'll be able to see the code that's actually drawing like a doji at the top, or you'll be able to modify it if you want, and that kind of stuff. It is completely open for you. Okay. Let's see. How do you move the pointer on the expert advisor? That's a good question, because sometimes, uh, sometimes it'll be locked on that last day, um, and if you have this button selected, it's kind of like a fast forward button on it, it pings it to the very last bar. So to move the chart, you can either do this to start to move it one day at a time. But once you start moving it, as long as you're not pinged to the last bar, you can just highlight right above this bar you want it to move to, and it'll move by itself to that bar. Um, the helper code, Graham, I'm not sure what you mean by the helper code. <laughs> um, so there are, well, there are some... Hmm. Yeah, I'll let you finish typing in the rest of that question. And I see it. You're... While you're doing that, I'm going to look for the answer. I think I know where you're going with it. Oh, the FML functions are also open. So in that case, you would come into the indicator builder. Um, you would come in and find SB, the name of the function. There's, a, there's only a few functions. There's the fry pan helper and the fry pan up and down. The fry pan was, coincidentally enough, one of the toughest pro patterns that we coded. Um, I think we went through about four or five different versions of that fry pan bottom and fry pan top to kind of come up with the one that we liked um, a lot. And uh, Steve, <laughs> Steve, gosh, uh, he just he just sat down with our programmer probably twice, two or three times a week, every week, and they'd look at patterns and they'd, they'd tweak the code a little bit, and they then after a while they threw that piece of code out. That The fry pan bottom was actually by far one of the more challenging pieces for us to work through on that one. So. Cool. Uh, I don't see any other questions. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I should kind of show to you. Um, that's it. I mean, it really kind of, I didn't think this would be a very long class because really it's a class about how to run Metastock. And Metastock has gotten a lot easier to use. We don't have to, you would just pick what scan we want, we run. We understand, if you understand, oh, there is one more thing. I just thought of what I wanted to make sure. Remember, we only had Oracle that was actually listed before. But one of the things I want to make sure that you understand is right here in the lower left-hand corner, there's a next button that says new instrument. And if I'm going to wiggle my mouse around, it's in the very lower left-hand corner. If you have a list of, let's say, 40 or 50 um, CPS signals that you've saved, that next button is going to take you to the next stock on that list. In this case, we only have Oracle, so it's just going to take you straight back to Oracle. But if you have a list of 30 or 40 that you saved off, it's a good way to be able to go next, 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 and it'll take you to the next stock on your list. Okay.
Yeah, I can go through the Metastock scan again. Absolutely, Ronnie. We'll go through that again. No problem. Um, Tybra, I don't have odds on the patterns or the success for them. Um, I, I can tell you anecdotally, um, um, since we've had the program fully built, I can see why people love Steve so much. I mean, uh, we, did a, we did a class last week with Steve, and one of the things that just made me really happy is one of the guys in that big classroom that was a much bigger classroom, um, came in and he said, you know what, I've been using Metastock for 10 years, but using Steve's methodologies and listen to what Steve has to say, this last year has been the best trading year I've ever had. And I, uh, I said to Steve, you better save that. It's a really, really good testimonial. So we love partnering with really, really good people. Um, we try and only partner with people we like. And um, uh, this is an example of a product that I think will be very beneficial for you. So this webinar, uh, this is recorded. Um, the webinar that we did last week, and I'll probably send it around on Monday uh, or Friday, actually probably Friday. So this webinar is recorded. Um, the one on uh, we did on last week on Thursday is recorded. Uh, the email I sent you to invite you to this class is actually uh, has that archive in it, or you can email me for it. Why does the code for T-Line Crunch use SMA 40, not 50? The T-Line Crunch, I'm a little confused, Graham. The T-Line Crunch is actually a seven-day X, I believe. <laughs> so uh, it's a seven-day exponential moving average. So um, it is possible. Let's see, we have a, no, it's an eight-day exponential moving average. This is the black line here. That's the T-Line Crunch. Um, you do need a Metastock 13 or higher T-Board to run this one. Um, yes, so you would need to upgrade, and they can give you a deal on that. Also, um, for those of you, and I would recommend that T-Board, especially with the new forecaster, but even, like, I just got back from the Traders Expo last week, and uh, I was talking to one of our partners, and he's like, I remember Metastock 10, and uh, oh gosh, uh, you, tr you spent probably about an hour to show me how to download data and maintain data and store data and then scan that data and oh, got a pain in the neck. I'm so glad that's gone. If you're using Reuters, you really should get 13 um, because it's so much easier. I mean, one of the things that they've tried to do is make it so easier. So let me show you how to run the scan again. Um, I promise to do that before I get too distracted and forget. Right here, this is our Explorer. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click on the Explorer that opens up our power console and it puts us on the explore tab okay now to run the CPS scan there's four versions so you just select the one that you want to run you click on next once you've decided on the one you want to run you click on next and that'll give you a list of the stocks to explore against in this case we did SMP 100 you probably realistically you probably do the optional stocks down here but you know scanning 4,000 actually is really quick in Metastock but 100 is even faster, and I wanted to keep the show going, so to speak. I'm going to do 100 again. Okay. Here, you select your either, in the case of uh, Graham, I think, was asking before, how do I scan for two days ago or three days ago? <coughs> you can do that. You just take this out and change it to 26 right here. Okay. Or um, let's see. Or you can change. You can do a scan against hourly, or 30 minutes, or weeklies if you want. You change that by the interval here. Uh, once you're kind of happy with that, I would recommend for all of these scans you use the load minimum records. It just runs a lot faster. Click on Start Exploration, and you just let it finish. Okay. What I was saying before when we ran through the exploration is here where it is where you can set it to high, medium, or low. Okay, but it ran so fast I didn't have a chance to kind of go through and talk about it. Um, it's amazing how fast it goes, particularly even with end of day, it just it rockets through the stocks really, really quickly. Here's the report. Okay, interesting. Well, I guess that's not too interesting. Um, <laughs> The market's not quite closed yet, so there was a, a little bit of different trading activity in Norfolk, and so it's actually also exhibiting a slow curve right now. Okay, so if I wanted to save that list, again, just to kind of walk you through the whole demo, we'll go ahead and click on Save List. You create new. Here, I'm just going to add it to the list we just made. Okay, and that's that's how you run a scan. The forecaster is 
kind of, I'm not, I think I'm going to kind of dodge that question a little bit um, just because it's going to take us way off topic for kind of the goal for today. But I will speak to it in kind of terms, um, in kind of a general term. And Graham, I'd be happy to send you um, a, a video we created on the Forecaster. The Forecaster is a brand new technology. It's a patent pending technology. And what it does is it looks for a specific event to happen. And using a lot of statistical math that I, uh, is way beyond kind of my understanding, um, using a lot of statistics, it'll say, like for example, if you open up the forecaster with, let's say, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, one of the events that it'll recognize is a 52-week high. Oh, I might as well just show it. <laughs> Can you open after scan and then save? Um, you, John, you can make a system test based on CPS. We did not do that um, simply because we had we wanted to because we didn't have very clear exit rules, more setups. It was more of a setup add-on to kind of show you different setups. And, John, it's, and Steve will talk about how he likes to exit different patterns. But it's not something that we have a test around. Now you could create one. You just have to come up with an exit criteria, and uh, so. But you certainly can go in and build a, uh, a system test. You bet. Here to help. Forecaster in a nutshell. I don't even know if I want to do this. Um, Forecaster is awesome. We put a patent on the technology, and uh, well, we're patent pending right now. Um, but what we would do is with system testing, just to kind of speak in kind of a broad stroke, with system testing you go in and you say every time this happens I'm going to buy. And when this happens I'm going to sell. And what is the result of that um, in terms of um, a system that works? With forecasting what we actually do, and this will not be a forecast demo, uh, I don't want to go too far down that. But with forecasting, what we've done is we've, we've put together a technology to take that, those events and say, well, when this happens, statistically, what is our corresponding price movement? Okay. And so, for example, right here, um, we're identifying on diamonds. I just opened up diamonds. We're identifying every time there's a CCI negative divergence. Okay. There's about 52 built-in patterns. These are the times that that's actually happened on the chart. Okay, and what I can do is if I click on one of those arrows, what it's going to do is it's going to generate what we call a four-class cloud. Okay, so what it's trying to predict is every time that negative divergence has happened, what is the correlated price movement after that pattern? So in this particular case, okay, this is kind of our correlated pattern. Now, the map is important. This cloud is important. Understanding this cloud is important. So right here, we've got a 30 to 100% chance. And you'll notice dark blue is only about 30% likelihood of being in this price area. Whereas when it gets bright pink, it's going to be between 60 and 80%. Okay? And so what we're doing is we're using some very statistically powerful methods. And we're identifying where it's very likely to be. And in this case, we're kind of predicting that it's going to be right about 162 to 164. In fact, it's 60 to 70 percent likely or greater right here to be right here in about a month before Christmas. Okay, so that's what the forecaster is. It's really, really cool. There's a lot of very complex math that goes in under the hood. There's a, this a statistic report basically kind of gives you a good idea. Um, it's been extremely well received. We have some videos about it on the website, especially by our option traders who really kind of like to be able to see um, kind of divergence from prices and stuff like that. So in a nutshell, that's the forecaster. It is really cool. And um, it's one of the new things that we've developed since we brought ourselves back from Thomson Reuters. And we've got such a great heritage of innovation here. It's nice to see that that's coming back now that we've kind of gotten rid of, let's say, maybe our parent company. 
Um, but yeah, this is kind of a, a brand new technology. It's not available in any platform I've seen. And um, this is only version one. We're going to do a lot of really cool things with this forecasting technology. Like per, like with Metastock, you can go in and create your own events that are recognized and your own cell signals and your own buy signals. We're going to allow you to go in and create your own events. So in a nutshell, that's a forecaster. And that's completely unrelated to what we were supposed to talk. So I was on the fence about showing it to you, but I couldn't help myself. Um, let's go. We are excited. I normally showed this all over the place in... in uh, Nevada, uh, in the Traders Expo, people loved it. We had a uh, huge brokerage. Fidelity came up to us and they asked us about it and said, everybody's asking about this. It was, it, uh, it was it's exciting. So anyway, okay, so just to kind of recap, I know most of you have the CPS. These are the four scans. I hope this was helpful for you too. If you have questions, you can email me. I will answer you. You all have my email because I emailed you about the class today. Um, if you haven't made a decision to buy CPS again or yet, I would recommend you do it. Uh, it's got the four explorations, the expert advisor, it's got the layout. Uh, it, uh, does identify those 20 layout patterns okay and uh, so again if you haven't bought it yet it's normally $3.99 it's $2.99 um, as a one-time cost in other words you don't have to pay again for it you own it forever um, if you need it you can get a free trial Metastock Metastock Pro and it does have a 30-day money-back guarantee so, and if uh, you can call our guys, they'll help you get set up for that. Or you can go to metastock.com slash candlestick forum A if you want. So that's it in a nutshell. My email address, I'm just going to type it in here. You're welcome to email me if you have questions on this or something else. Um, I'll answer you. Um, I am going to be out for Turkey Day for the weekend, so I can give you a little bit of um, time to get back to you. But there's my email address. Happy holidays for everybody that's in the U.S. Um, and celebrates it. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> and uh, thanks for coming today. Appreciate it.